Hello, good morning. We'll be getting started at the top of the hour at 10 a.m. Thanks for joining us today. All right, we've hit that 10 o'clock mark. We'll still give everyone a chance to filter in, uh, but I'm gonna get us rolling. So good morning and welcome. Thank you for joining us for our Learning Libby with the Experts webinar today. We have a morning chock full of info for you. We'll start with the basics and then we'll wrap up with some of my favorite tips and tricks with a short break in the middle, just so you can kind of take a moment to pause, you know, maybe take some quiz questions, and uh, we'll get your questions answered as well. My name is Joe. I'm part of the Digital Bookmobile team here at Overdrive. So of course, Overdrive, we've had our flagship app, the original Overdrive app for several years that has really built us out in the library space for borrowing eBooks and audiobooks. And of course, we are the makers of the Libby app, the you know, brand new app designed to make reading just a lot easier on your favorite devices. So that's a little bit about Overdrive and Libby. And then of course, uh, I am the one who plans a tour route for our digital bookmobile. We send it across the US and Canada and visit libraries just like yours and show people usually in person how to get started with Libby. But today we are still staying safe at home and uh, we'll be doing this virtually. So I've had the chance to do this uh, thousands of times in person and now quite a few times online as well. So let's dive into getting started. But before we do that, just a few housekeeping items I wanted to cover. We do have closed captions enabled for our webinar and you can adjust those in your Zoom meeting controls. So if you need to toggle those on or off, you can do that there. And if they get in your way while we go through the presentation, you can always use your mouse or your finger to drag them to a different part of your screen. You can ask questions throughout the entire webinar. I'm presenting alone today, so I won't be able to get to them right away, but all questions will be answered. Tap on the box in the meeting controls that says Q&A, type out your question, and you'll get a response in there under the Answered tab. I'm recording our webinar today, and you'll receive an email tomorrow morning from Zoom that includes a link to our full recorded presentation. This gives you the opportunity to review anything that you'd like to see again. Um, if you need to hop out early for any reason, maybe you're not staying for the full hour and a half, uh, you just want to stay for the basics and review the getting start or the uh, tips and tricks on your own time, totally fine. Just keep an eye out for that email. Now we recommend, since you can review the session in that recording, that you watch as I take us through the basics and wait to download the Libby app and dive in until after we wrap up and go into that break period between the two sessions. When the webinar ends today, a survey is going to pop up in your browser. If you could fill that out for me, let me know what you thought and what we could do differently in the future. I'd greatly appreciate it. And then last but certainly not least, I'll be connecting my iPad into the webinar. Sometimes Zoom cuts off part of my display. I want you to be able to see Libby in her full glory. And I'll be sending out some instructions in the chat. Super simple, quick fix, only takes a couple seconds. So you can see everything. All right, and I'm going to send those instructions out now, uh, just so you've got them in the chat. Go. And now let me take a second to get my iPad connected into the webinar. Now, as I mentioned, I am using an iPad today, but the Libby app is available for download on your Apple mobile devices like iPhones and iPads or your Android mobile devices. Now, too many of those to list, but think of your typical smartphones and tablets. So things like Samsung's and Google Pixels, all of that you can download and enjoy Libby on. 
If you don't have uh, an Android or uh, Apple device like that, you can use Libby in your browser by going to libbyapp.com. And whether you're using Apple, Android, or that website, you'll have the same experience once we get into Libby. All right, I'm all connected. So I'm going to take us through downloading and signing in before we head into those basics. So if you are on an Apple device, you'll be headed to your blue App Store icon. <clears throat> if you're on an Android device, you'll be headed to the Google Play Store. It's that multicolored play button, multicolored triangle. Basically, we just need to head to wherever we would typically download our apps from. So I'll start in my App Store and come down to search. And then I'm just going to type in Libby and hit enter. Because when I do that, Libby's going to be one of the top results that pops up. So here she is. This is what we're looking for, this maroon app icon with Libby reading her book. And we're looking for Libby by Overdrive. Now Libby is completely free to download. And you'll see on your screen either get or install. So tap get or install and give Libby a minute to download. You might need to sign into the App Store, just depending on your device's settings, but remember, completely free. Now, once Libby's all downloaded, we'll leave the App Store and go and find that freshly downloaded Libby app on our device's screen. When we tap in for the very first time, Libby has a few questions for us to help us find our library and get signed in with our library card. We only need to do these steps the first time we're setting up our device. And then going forward, Libby will remember all of this info so we can dive right back into our library. So let's answer our first question here. Do you have a library card? I'm gonna say yes. And now we need to find our library location. Now, I always recommend using I'll search for a library, the second option here, because you can search by the name of your library, the city you live in, or your zip code. It's nice and precise. Guess my library doesn't always work. And what I wanted to point out is this top option. So we'll go through I'll search for a library in just a second, and you're going to use this when you set up your primary Libby device. But if you're like me and you want to use Libby on your smartphone and your tablet, you can use copy from my other device when you start to set up that second device to pull all of your saved info in and make it nice and quick. So just wanted to point that out if you're setting up more than one device. But let's wrap up our first device setup here. I'm going to tap on I'll search for a library. And then I'll come up here and I'm just going to type in the zip code. There we go. And I can see right here, Massapequa Public Library. You might see the name of your library and the address appear here. There's also other branches, but what we're really looking for is this name up top, Nassau Digital Doorway. This is the name of your library's digital collection. So your physical building shares with 54 other branches in New York, all sharing this one wonderful digital collection of eBooks, audiobooks, and magazines and that is called Nassau Digital Doorway. So this is what you want to see pop up and you'll just tap on that box to choose it. We're almost done, we just need to sign in here. So we need to see where our library card is from. Let's tap on choose a location and then we're just going to scroll through this alphabetical list until we hit the M's and there we go. We can see Nassau Pequa Public. And now all we need to do is type in our library card number. So you're going to find this number usually under a barcode on your card. And just enter only the numbers, no dashes or spaces. And once that card number is in, we'll tap on sign in. Now, every once in a while, because you're on that screen, you might miss a number or flip a number. So just if it doesn't work the first time, type in that number again. If you have any trouble signing in after making sure the number is correct, just reach out to your library. They're the ones who manage your library card info. Well, it looks like I typed it in right. My card has appeared here on the screen. 
And now I see I can borrow 10 digital loans in Libby and I can place a hold on up to eight. We'll finish the sign-in process by tapping next. And now we have access to our library's complete collection of eBooks, audiobooks, and magazines. Now I'm gonna take a second here to switch over to my demo library. I like to use a demo library so we make sure not borrowing anything y'all might be waiting for. Just makes it a little bit easier so that way we don't, you know, kind of bug your whole lists or anything like that. You're going to see a different logo on my screen and some different options or collections, but everything functions exactly the same. So just keep that in mind. The buttons that I'll be showing off all, will still appear in your library and will work the same way. All right, looks like everything is connected the way I need it to be. And so let's dive into the basics. Before we do that, I want to just reiterate, if you can't see my full screen, follow those instructions I put in the chat. If you're not seeing those in chat, just pop it into Q&A and I'll post them there as well. You need to be able to see the icons at the bottom of my screen. This is kind of what we're going to use to center ourselves throughout the presentation. All right. So we are going to talk about all of these icons at the bottom in our navigation bar at some point this morning, uh, but we are going to use Libby here in the center as kind of our guide mark. And we're gonna start with the icons to the left and we'll wrap up uh, with the ones on the right. So you can see right now we are on this library icon. It looks like a library building. And this is your digital collection page. So this is just like browsing around the physical library. You, you, know, you walk around and you'll see those different end caps of suggested books from your friendly neighborhood librarians. Going to the library page is the same feeling in the Libby app. You can you know, feel like you're browsing around and walking around. It's great when you don't know exactly what you're looking for. You're just hoping to stumble upon your next great read. Couple things I want to point out here. Underneath your library logo, you'll have some filters that are a great way to kind of jump into the different things you might be interested in. I love to jump into subjects when I'm looking for something new. Then as we start to scroll through this page, that's where you're going to have that kind of end cap experience. So you'll see different collections put together by your librarians, uh, just like you might see in the summer, books for reading on the beach, or in the winter, cozy mysteries, different holidays, they'll have craft guides and things like that. Those are going to kind of appear here as you scroll. I also wanted to point out this section called guides. This is a fun way that your library breaks down different groups. So if you want to find a book for your kiddo or your grandkid, you can hop into the kids section and find age appropriate content. Or if you pop into more guides, you'll find different lists curated together. And that's where you can find your library's magazines. If we hop into more guides, you'll see them start to break down. These will look different in your library than my demo here, but you'll find your magazine space as well. Of course, as I mentioned, you keep scrolling, you might find one of those different uh, collections that you want to dive into. This one I love, great audiobooks under three hours. But so that's how you can kind of browse the library, going to that library building. If you know exactly what you're looking for, you can come down to the search button here. It's a little magnifying glass. So we'll head into the magnifying glass and we can type in something like, let's go with one by one. Let's say it's by Ruth Ware. I'm gonna type in the name of the title I'm looking for specifically. And instead of picking one of these suggestions here, I'm just going to tap search in my device's keyboard. This is going to pull up everything that matches one by one. And we can see that kind of the closest answer is going to appear up here at the top. So I can see the book I was looking for right there conveniently for me. All right, there we go. And so this gives us, let me just scroll that up a little higher on the screen for you. This gives me the opportunity to talk about eBooks and audiobooks. 
So I wanna give you a hint as to how you can tell the difference between the two. If we look at this copy of One by One, it's that rectangular jacket cover, it looks like your typical book. That's how you know it's going to be your ebook format. But if you come over here to this other version of One by One next to it, you'll see this square cover, kind of like a CD case. And underneath, you'll see a little headphone symbol with 13 hours. So that's the runtime of the book. That's how you're going to know that this is your audiobook option. So you'll either have that full cover or you'll have the short one with a duration underneath. Great way to be able to pick. Now, just like how in the physical library, your library borrows or buys copies of books and then audiobooks, they do the same thing digitally. So you have to make the choice of which one you want before you borrow it because you won't be able to change it once it's checked out. You'll then have to go back and borrow the other one. Another great example here is the difference between a title you can borrow right away and a title you need to place on a wait list. So for our audiobook copy here, we see place hold and this little calendar on our library card. If I wanted to join the waiting list, all I need to do is tap place hold and we'll be on this confirmation screen. At the bottom, we'll see about how long we'll be waiting to borrow this book. And all we need to do to confirm our spot is tap on place hold. From here, we have a few options, including that we could play a sample. It'll give us the first 30 minutes of the book, or if it's an ebook, it'll give you the first chapter. Instead, I'm going to tap on keep browsing, and that's going to take me back to the search we were just in because I want us to come over and borrow this ebook version of One by One. So I could tap on borrow and it's gonna take me to a similar screen. I could tap on my library card with the plus sign here. It'll also prompt me to borrow the book. But maybe someone recommended this to you, but you still don't quite know what it's about. If you want to find out more on a title, you wanna read its back jacket basically, just tap on the cover of the book and this will take you to the title details page. So you'll have a lot of great info here, you know, different quotes about the book, an overall description. You can kind of see what different subjects or genres it falls into. And if you keep scrolling, you'll see different info about the ebook version itself. So you can read through this and decide if you want to borrow it. And let's go ahead and borrow it. We'll tap on that borrow button right here. And I just want to draw your attention at the top of the screen. You are borrowing one by one for 14 days. For ebooks, that's your default, and that's the highest amount of time you can borrow an ebook for two weeks. But you do have the option to change your audiobooks up to 21. So if you wanted to take an audiobook out for 21 days, you would just tap on where it says 14 and instead choose 21. But for ebooks, 14 days is the highest you have available. All right, I'm going to tap borrow to confirm that I want to check out this book. And then we'll see right here in this circle that Libby is working right now to download this title so I can read it offline. In the Libby app on your mobile device, uh, you'll be able to download ebooks and audiobooks for offline reading. So now that I have this check mark next to my library card, that means I could turn off my Wi Fi and go into the middle of the woods or on the beach or up in a plane and still be able to read or listen to my title. So just keep in mind, that's a great option you have available. All right, let's open this book and look at some features of an ebook in Libby. Now, one great feature that is exclusive to Libby and Overdrive is that you can send titles to your Kindle if you want to read it on one of those Amazon devices. So if you have something like a uh, Kindle Paperwhite you like to read on, you could tap this button and it will send your ebook version to your Kindle. Some simple steps that you can follow on the screen. But I don't have a Kindle I love reading on Libby, so I'm going to go with the Libby option and take you through what that looks like. Now, when we open up an ebook, we're going to see these menus at the top and bottom of the screen, kind of blocking our progress forward. To make those disappear, we'll tap in the center of the screen and they pop away. If you want to make them reappear, just tap in the center of the screen again, 
and we'll be checking out some of these in a little bit. This bottom menu is going to give you info on the book, so we can see we're on page one of 387. We can also access our table of contents by tapping this center box here. Right now it's telling us we're on the cover. But I just want to start flipping through, so I'll make those menus disappear, and then I'll either tap or swipe on the right side of my screen to page forward. Now I'm going to flip through a little quickly here to get into a nice chunk of text. And the great thing about ebooks is you are not missing out on any of that stuff that you usually find. All those blank pages are represented, all of the title info is there. So it really is the same experience. All right, we're in this nice big page of text. Let's look at some ways that we can customize our ebook. I'm going to tap in the center of the screen to make those menus reappear. I'm going to come up to the top and tap on this A icon. This is going to bring us into our appearance menu. And from here, there are three ways we can customize our ebook's appearance. First thing we can change is our text scale so we can make it larger or smaller. Uh, this just depends on what you need for your device and for your comfort. I always like to say in Libby, every ebook can be a large print book. The next thing you can change is the lighting. This is the background color of the book. So right now we're in bright mode. This is our default, a nice white background for reading during the day out in the sun. But we also have sepia, like a paperback book, or the dark mode, which is amazing for reading at night, easy on the eyes. And some people love this for reading all the time. Just do what works best for you. It's yours to customize. And then last, we have book design. This is our way of saying font. So you can change the font of the book. We're in our publisher's default. So if you picked this book up off the shelf of the library, the font would match exactly. But there's four other choices you have, including our open dyslexic font, which is designed to help some users with dyslexia to read. I'm just gonna take a second here and pop all of these back to my settings because these are sticky settings. So basically what that means is you only have to make those changes one time and Libby will apply them to all books you either already have checked out or check out going forward. So you never have to go in and keep making those customizations. Libby's going to make the books work for you instead of you having to work for the book. All right, that's all I wanna show you in an ebook. Wanted to talk about those customizations. I'm going to leave the book by tapping in the center of the screen and then tapping back in the upper left-hand corner. This has now brought us to our shelf and I wanna take a second to reorient everyone. At the bottom of the screen in our navigation bar, you'll see it's split now. We have the now reading box right here. This is showing us that we were just in one by one. And if you wanted to jump back into it, you could tap on it and it would take you back into the place you left off. I'm going to dismiss this by tapping the X. So we've got full view of our navigation bar here. So let's look at the center. We started to the left of Libby. We went to the library building to browse for a new book. Then we went to the magnifying glass to search for the specific book we were looking to find. Now we're going to switch over to the right side of the Libby icon. We are on this stack of books right here. This is our shelf. All of your current loans and holds, so everything you're currently borrowing or that you are waiting to borrow on a hold list for lives here. So this is a great spot to be on the shelf. We can see up at the top, I can filter out my loans or my holds. We'll talk about tags in the tips and tricks session. And if I scroll through this page, the first thing you're going to see is anything that's ready to borrow right away is going to appear right at the top. Libby's telling me, hey, check this out. And then as I keep scrolling through, I'm going to see the other things that I have borrowed on my card, kind of based on how old they are. So what I've opened most recently to what I've kind of touched the least. So since we're on our shelf, let's open up an audiobook and take a second to look at one of those. 
going to open up astrophysics for people in a hurry. And we're going to see that it's a little similar to our ebook experience. We have those menus at the top and bottom. These just don't happen to disappear. So the most important button in this screen is this big one in the center. Right now it's that triangle or that play button. And when I press it, it's going to turn into a pause button. So then it'll start that audio playback for us. We'll do that in just a second. Up at the top of our screen, we have our kind of duration here. So I can see I'm 26% through the audiobook, how much time I've spent listening and how much is left in the book. So I'm going to tap on play. And there we go. I should be hearing him, but you shouldn't be able to. Narrator is now speaking for me, and he is going to keep going reading through this book until I tap this pause button. So Libby is designed to play audiobooks in the background. So whenever you're done listening, make sure you come through and tap that button. Otherwise, she'll keep on going. You'll keep having that book playing, and you'll open it back up and go, hey, I didn't actually finish this. So whether you lock your screen, the audio will keep playing, or even if you switch to another app, maybe you're browsing through social media or you're doing some online shopping, you can still have that audiobook playing or you can do my favorite thing. I always put my headphones in, lock my phone, put it in my pocket, and that's how I do my chores. So then you'll have to come back through and tell Libby to stop when you're done. To leave just like an ebook, we'll tap on back and this will take us back to our shelf. We can see our now reading has changed at the bottom of the screen for that audiobook we just entered. Now, you don't have to worry. You could be listening to an audiobook and reading an ebook, uh, two different books, you know, just kind of, oh, I'm listening to this when I'm in the mood for that and reading that when I'm in the mood. And Libby's going to keep remembering wherever you left off without any bookmarks or anything like that. And you can dive right back into either title whenever you all right, we've got two icons left before we wrap up here. Next, we'll look at this clock icon. This is our timeline. So if your shelf is everything you're currently reading or uh, waiting to borrow, your clock icon, your timeline here is your history. This is kind of your past. So think of this as everything that you've already done, even if some of it is current. And so from here, you can see your loans, your holds, your renewals, your returns, everything is gonna appear in here and give you a history as you scroll through of what you've borrowed. All right, let's wrap up in the center here. We're going to go into the Libby menu in just a second, but before we do that, I wanted to point out this little bubble on the top of her head here with the number three in it. Libby's telling me I have three notifications waiting for me in the menu. So when I tap on that icon, we'll see those notifications appear up here at the top in these cards. So just like we saw on our shelf, we have a hold ready to borrow. She's also notifying me right here, my hold is ready. And I can just swipe through them and go through those different notifications until we hit this last box here, telling me what library I'm at and manage notifications. We're gonna dive into this menu in just a little bit to talk about what notifications are and what they look like. Uh, this is where you'd go if you wanted to make any changes to your settings, but the first time you place a book on hold, Libby's going to bring this menu to you automatically so you can set those preferences. So I have to bring us here just so we can talk about it, but when you're ready to place your first hold, Libby's going to bring this to you so you can adjust how you like. All right, so there are three ways we can be notified by events in Libby and quite a few things we can be notified about. First way we can be notified is notification. It's this teal option. This is going to appear on your device's screen like a text message. So regardless of what app you're in, it'll pop down from the top and say, hey, this is returning, or hey, this is ready to borrow. This is great if you're someone who isn't going to go into Libby every day, and you might miss those little uh, circle numbers on her head in the center of the screen. 
These will be on your device's main screen and kind of go in that notification center like your texts do. So I turn this one on for things I wanna make sure I never miss, even though I'm in Libby almost every day. The next option, this gold one is menu badge. It's what you saw. It's those little number icons with the cards appearing in the menu. This is that great option if you're always opening Libby or if it's something you want to see, but it's not necessarily important you see no matter what app you're in. And then the last option is ignore. There are some things I choose to ignore, like when my loans return. I know I, I, know I was done reading it and I didn't return it early, so I don't need to know that it went back to the library. So those are the ways you can be notified. And then I just want to talk about hold ready because this is probably one of the most important things you can be notified about. When you're waiting to borrow, oop, I'm in a room with automatic lights and I must not have moved around enough. <laughs> All right, so when you're on a waiting list for a title, you want to know that that book is ready for you to borrow. So what you need to do is come in and manage your hold ready notifications. So when a title is available to borrow, like we saw on my shelf, you have a three day period to make one of three options. You can either borrow that book right then, you can have Libby deliver the title later. So you'll pick how long you want to wait. She'll keep you at the top of the waiting list and she'll let other people on the list kind of pass by you until uh, that time that you set is up or you can cancel the hold. You can say, you know what? I don't want it anymore. Take me off the list. Now, if the first time, if you don't take one of those actions, borrow it, have it delivered later, or cancel your hold, Libby is going to automatically, one time as a courtesy to you, have it delivered later. So she'll keep you at the top of the list. And then um, she gives you about a week and she'll bring it back and say, Okay, you missed it the first time, but are you ready to borrow this book? If you don't take one of those actions that second time, she'll cancel your hold and you'll be removed from the list. So if you still want to be on the wait list for that book, you'll have to rejoin it from the bottom. So I harp on this one because it's super important and nothing is more of a day ruiner than when you miss your hold being available. So just make sure you've got your notifications set the way you like. other things to talk about in the Libby menu before we wrap up here. Next thing is your libraries. So this is where your library cards are going to live. Libby's designed to store multiple library cards, whether you have access to different libraries in your state, or if you have residents in a couple different locations and you've got other cards, you can store multiple cards from different libraries like I am here. Or if you're a family sharing a device, you can store multiple cards from the same library. Then we've got help and support. Two things to cover in here. First, I want to take us into the new settings menu. Up at the top, I mentioned at the top of our presentation uh, that if you are setting up Libby on multiple devices, you can use that copy to another device button to make setup faster for that second or third device. You'll need to come into the settings menu to open up copy to another device and get the code on that first one you have already set up. So great way to do that. And then let's see, where did that go? The other thing I want to point out in this menu is customize navigation. So when we tap in here, if you've noticed at the bottom of my screen for my navigation bar, all my icons are labeled. This is a feature I love and have turned on, but when you download Libby, they're going to be turned off. So it might help you to come into settings and then customize your navigation and turn labeled icons on so you can have that little bit of help to remember which one's the shelf, which one's the library. So just keep that in mind, you might want that on. Last thing under help and support, let's go in to get some help. So we've got some common solutions to frequently asked questions, but I love up here this help box. So I'm going to 
let's see. Um, I don't talk about returning books early because I try to keep this just to the basics, everything you need to know, and books automatically return on their due date so you never have to worry about fines or late fees. But if you want to learn how to return a title early, you could type in a keyword like that. And Libby's going to give you some article suggestions. So I'm going to go into returning books. And up at the top, she's going to tell me that they return automatically. But if you want to return it early, here's how you can do that. So it can go to the next person on the wait list or be back on the shelves for someone to browse and find. So you can do this with anything you might be looking for in Libby. Now, if you don't find the answer here in one of those help articles, you can come down and tap on Ask Our Support Team. This will prompt you to send an email to our tech support team. We're a group of Libby experts available 24-7, 365 days of the year. So you can reach out to them and let them know if you're having a problem, if you have a question, or even if you have an idea for the Libby app for the future, and they will get back to you and help you as soon as they can. Usually they reply via email in a couple hours. Um, at worst, I think at the start of the pandemic when so many people had questions as they were diving into Libby, it took up to 24 hours, but usually they get back within an hour. All right. And that wraps up our getting started session. Everything you need to know for your day-to-day -day life in the Libby app. Just gonna flip over here to a few next steps. So we have about 10 minutes. At 10.45, we'll head into our deep dive session. So for now, I encourage you, feel free to get up, stretch, get some coffee or some you know, morning beverages and be ready to go for that 1045. Feel free to send through any questions you might have. You can even ask questions anonymously and I'll be here to answer those for you. If you don't have questions for me, stick around for our mini quiz. I have some questions for you to test what you learned. We'll go into those in just a minute. At 1045, as I mentioned, we'll head into our deep dive session where we look at some of my favorite tips and tricks. Um, recommend that you stick around for this if you are feeling confident and comfortable and ready to learn more. I don't want anyone to feel overwhelmed. I go a little bit faster in the deep dive session. So, you know, just remember we are recording and you'll be able to review that. I'll give you a last call before we go into the deep dive, just so that way you can kind of gauge your comfort and if you're ready to take on more. Otherwise, you'll know that you can hop off then and review at your own pace once you get that recording. All right, give me one second here. And let's go into our quiz. Of course, please, as I said, feel free. Take the time now to download the Libby app, play around, ask me questions as you go, ask questions about anything you might be experiencing or get up and stretch, or uh, take this quiz with me. The questions are going to appear on your screen automatically. Everything is entirely, um, completely anonymous. You're not gonna be called out. No one can see who answered what. So give it your best answer. And if you don't know, please feel free to mark unsure. In the navigation bar, what do you tap to browse your library's collection? The magnifying glass, the library building, the Libby icon, the stack of books, or the clock. So you want that browsing experience, you're not looking for anything specific yet, what are you tapping to choose? Going to close this question in five, four, three, two, one. All right, in the navigation bar, when you're ready to browse your library's collection, you will go and tap on that library building. This gives you that feeling of walking around the physical library digitally. You can look at the different subjects and guides up at the top. You can scroll through and see those guides listed out here, or you can dive into one of the curated lists of titles made by your local library. When you know exactly what you're looking for, that's when you'll tap on that magnifying glass and type in the name of a title or an author, 
a series name, or even the name of a magazine. And then when you tap search, everything that matches is going to pop up for you. Awesome. For question number two, we're still in the navigation bar. What do you tap to find your current loans and holds? The magnifying glass, the library building, the Libby icon, the stack of books, or the clock? Remember those current loans and holds live on your shelf. What do you tap to get there? And we'll close this one in five, four, three, two, one. All right, everyone, great work. As I mentioned, those loans and holds live on your shelf. When you are ready to go and check that out, you can go to the stack of books icon. And from here, you could filter by your current loans or holds. Or if you scroll through this main page here, you can see everything you've currently borrowed and any available to borrow holds will appear at the top. Okay, for question number three, let's dive into an ebook. What are the three ways you can customize your ebook's appearance? Select all that apply. So you can change the text scale, the lighting, the book design, or the language. So can you change the size of the font of the book, the background color of the book, the font the book is written in, or the language the book is written in? Three correct answers. And we'll close this in five, four, three, two, one. All right. So we've got some great answers here. This is one of our trick questions. When you're ready to customize your ebook's appearance, tap in the center of the screen and open up that appearance menu. From here, you can change the size of the font. Like I love to say, every ebook can be a large print book. Next, you can change the lighting or that background color. Bright is our default. And then of course, we'll show off the dark mode again. And then last, you can change the book design or the font the book is written in. So we've got the publisher's default and the open dyslexic along with three other different fonts. But there's even a custom button available where you can kind of really create and customize your own experience. You can change things like the line, uh, the spacing between the lines of text. All right, question number four, this is a quick one. True or false, titles return automatically on their due date. And I'll close this one in three, two, one. All right, so that is true. Titles return automatically on their due date, so you never have to worry about fines or late fees. If you wanna return a title early, so I can go back to the library, go to your shelf by tapping on that stack of books. And then next to the title you want to return, tap on manage loan and then return early. You'll have a confirmation screen so you don't ever accidentally return something you didn't mean to. But if you tap it that second time, it's going to head back into the library and be ready to be borrowed by someone else. All right, question number five. When a hold becomes available, you can borrow the title, have the title delivered later, or cancel your hold. How long do you have to make one of these choices? One day, two days, three days, or one week? And I'll close this one in five, four, three, two, one. All right, so you have three days to either borrow the title, have the title delivered later, or cancel your hold. You can make any of these choices from your shelf. You'll see it appearing right up at the top. Borrow, have it delivered later, where you can select how long you want to stay at the top of the list, or tap on manage hold, and then cancel hold. 
I'll sneak in one final question here. How can you tell visually if a title is an audiobook while browsing? Has a smaller jacket cover, there's a headphone icon, the runtime is under the jacket cover, or all of the above. And I'll close this in five, four, three, two, one. Awesome work, everyone. Thank you for these great answers. So the correct answer is all of the above. You have that full rectangular jacket cover on an ebook, but for that audiobook, we've got our square jacket cover with the headphones and runtime underneath. Another great way you can tell when you're in a search result like this, you'll either see read sample or play sample. And that wraps up our quiz period here. I'm just going to jump over to this screen. This is the time where I want to give you that last call and say thank you for joining us for our beginners portion of the Learning Libby with the Experts webinar. We're about to head into our deep dive session where we will take a deeper look at four of our favorite features of the library reading app Libby. As a reminder, if you are at kind of your max, you've taken in all the info you can for today, no worries, you can tap leave in the bottom right hand corner of your screen to exit the webinar. You'll receive an email tomorrow from Zoom that will give you the chance to hop into the recording and see anything you wanted to from that session at your own pace. If you are leaving now, when you do leave, a survey is going to pop up in your browser. Fill that out for me and let me know what, what you thought of today's webinar. All right, and if you're sticking around with us today, I'm just going to hop into our tips and tricks session. We didn't have anyone new join us, so I'm just going to quick click through that housekeeping. And let's look at the four tips and tricks we'll be looking at today. First, I'm going to talk about magazines, some of the great new features in the Libby app, and uh, we'll take a look at those. Then we're going to look at the ways that we can uh, kind of set up to only see the titles we want while browsing, or when we're in a search result, how we can filter and refine our lists to find the titles we like faster. Then we're gonna talk all about tags, one of my favorite tips, what they are, why I love them, and how you can use them. And then we'll wrap up with making and exporting notes and highlights. All right, give me one second to connect my iPad back in. go. And I am just going to dive right in to tip number one. So tip number one is all about magazines. And as I mentioned, you can find magazines by searching for the title of the magazine or on that library page. You can go to the guide and view the different collections of magazines your library offers. I already have one downloaded because you didn't need to see how to borrow it again. I'm just going to open it up in Libby. And when you open up a magazine, it's going to look a lot like an ebook. You'll have those menus at the top and bottom of the screen. So first, let's look at a few ways we can navigate through a magazine. You can do what I like to call the 2020 vision route if you can see uh, what these little thumbnails are. You could click on any of them and it'll jump to that page. I have our glasses. This is not anything I can really see to navigate. Or if we make those menus disappear, we can flip through just like in an ebook. And this way you're going to see all of those ads, all of those articles, anything like that. But if you're like me, you're making your way to this table of contents page to kind of figure out what is the article I want to read here. So let's see, I, let's hop over to drinks. So the cool part about magazines in Libby is all of these are links. So if I want to go to this article, all I need to do is tap on it 
and Libby is going to take me right to that page. Skipping over everything in between, I'm going right where I want. So that way I don't have to see anything I don't want to see. And here we are. So now we're on this page. If I wanted to in the past, I would have hit this zoom button and I could zoom in and out to read the different text down here. But there's a great new button for magazines in Libby. And it's this one right at the bottom, looks like a page. And when we tap this, we go into the article view. So from here, we have this great scrolling format where I can go from top to bottom and read through the full article. The other thing that's fantastic about this is this is using my appearance settings from an ebook. So I get that font size that I want and even the background color I want. So I don't have to spend time pinching in and out and flipping through different pages uh, to read a full article. I can just scroll right on through and have this great article experience. Another reason I love this article view, this new feature added in Libby, are these buttons right here. So we've got the hands pointing back and forward and the little bulleted list in the middle. If I tap on either of these, it's going to take me to the next article just by flipping through. And this is going to skip over all of those ads in the middle. And I'm just going article to article. Every once in a while an ad slips in, but maybe you see one in a magazine instead of every, every page or every other page. So it's a great way to kind of skip around nice and easy and stay in this easy to read format of scrolling. So that's what the hands are for. If we tap on this list in the middle, this is going to bring up our article view. So I can look at the title of the author and if it's, or I'm sorry, the title of the article, and if it sounds interesting to me, I can come in and click on it. So if I wanted to read about grizzly bears, I can just tap on grizzly bears and I'm right in that article without having to flip, 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 see the, you know, the cologne ads I'm not interested in and whatnot, and dive right into that next article. When you're done reading, you can either tap this little down arrow or tap on back and it will close that view and take us back into the full magazine experience. To leave, just like in an ebook, we'll tap in the center of the screen and tap back up in the top left corner and we'll be back on our shelf. And that quick tip is tip number one, all about magazines and some of the great new features available. For tip number two, we're going to look at filtering and refining lists and customizing our browsing experience. So first to do that, let's head over to the library building and head to our digital collection or our library page. So for this one, I want to show you how fast we can narrow down a list to find something we are looking for specifically. So I like to have a little prompt for this one. Let's say tomorrow I am taking my mom on a road trip. She's wanted to go to Dollywood for quite a while. And we're finally going to, you know, bite the bullet and make the drive to go to Dollywood. So since we'll be driving, I'll need an audiobook. Since we're going to go tomorrow, I need it to be available. I can't wait on a holds list. And I'll let mom pick what she wants. She loves um, mysteries that are also historical fiction. And then the last thing, she reads a lot of them. So it needs to be a newer historical fiction mystery title. So let's see how quickly and uh, how few titles we can look at to find one of those. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm actually going to use one of these filters up at the top. I'm gonna dive right into available now. This will only show me titles that don't have a wait list. I can see I'm looking at all available titles in what's available. All right, so we're in our search here and you can see there's 77,000 titles to get through. That is so much. 
the first thing I want to do is show you how you can set some preferences when you're browsing so you only see the titles you're interested in. So since we're in a search result, we're going to tap on this box that says preferences. Now there are some great ones here and from my experience out on the road with the digital bookmobile, a couple of the popular ones are format. So maybe you only want to listen to audiobooks or you only want to read ebooks, you don't ever want to see audiobooks or magazines. You could pick books and this will be a permanent change that will stick and stay and apply anywhere you look. Now I like all of the formats, so I keep that on any. The other one I see a lot on the road is audience. So maybe you're handing this tablet to a kiddo and you wanna make sure they're only seeing age appropriate content. You could put a juvenile or young adult filter on and that will cut out all of the content that is general or mature and they're only seeing things in their age range. But the one I like to set is language. And this is one of the most popular ones I see out on the road. So you can't change the language of a title once you borrow it. So if you speak multiple languages, maybe you don't have anything set, but if you only speak one language, you can pick your, your spoken or listening language and set a preference so that you're only ever seeing titles in English in this case. So now we went from 77 titles, or 77,000 titles to about 66,000 titles. We cut about 11,000 titles out by only seeing books that we can read or listen to in our chosen language. So like I said, preferences, we have this number one here now, they stay all the time. They never go away unless you come back into those menus and remove them. But what we're about to do in this search for my audiobook for my road trip with my mother, we are going to do some refining, which is temporary. So you'll see all of the same options available for us to choose from, but they're only going to apply to this search we're doing right now versus that English preference, which is going to stay sticky until I change it. So we talked about preferences and we're in available now, but I need to find an audiobook. Let's go from 60,000 plus titles to 21,000 just by tapping on audiobooks. That's going to filter out all of the ebooks and all of the magazines. Now we're going to come over to our refine menu. Let's add a subject. So I said my mother likes mystery and historical fiction. She doesn't just want a whodunit, she wants them to be in hoop skirts and corsets. So first let's add that mystery option here. And just by jumping into mystery, we've gone from 21,000 audiobooks to 2,800 audiobooks. We'll come back into refine and then subject. And let's add another subject. Let's get that historical fiction in here. I'll tap on this one. And what I love about refining lists in Libby is that this is giving us niche subjects. So instead of it being all mystery and all historical fiction that I have to comb through, I'm actually seeing books that are both mystery and historical fiction. So I've gone from 2,800 audiobooks to 206, which is a much more manageable list to comb through. But the last criteria I need is I want to see those popular or those, instead of the popular titles up at the top, I want to see the new titles. So I'm going to go down to sort by and choose release date. My mother is a fiend for mystery historical fiction. I don't want to have to be like, okay, did you read this one already? We'll kick out all the older titles and go right for those new ones right up at the top. So just like that, very quickly, we went from 77,000 titles to 206, and it shouldn't take me more than an hour to find a book that I want for my mother to be able to listen to during our road trip. And that wraps up tip number two, setting preferences and filtering and refining lists. We're gonna stay on this page to roll into tip number three, which is where we talk all about tags. 
Now, I love tags. They're a way that you can make and categorize different lists in Libby. Uh, so in the OverDrive app, you had a wish list, and that was it. You had your wish list and your history, and it wasn't very dynamic. Tags in Libby are super robust, and the only limits to your tags are your imagination. So uh, what I do on my personal device, I'll make different tags based on the people in my life. So my mother loves to read, we know this, and the best you, gift you could get her that she won't feel guilty accepting or that won't sit around, you know, not being used is a book. She will read that book. So as I go through getting ready for different holidays, when I'm in Libby, I'll just pop lists into my mom tag. And when I am heading to the bookstore to pick up those books for her to own and love, It'll only take me a few seconds because I can go through that list of things I decided I think she'd like, uh, and then I can spend more time shopping for myself while I'm there. <laughs> a little bit selfish. Uh, other thing I love to do is I'll set up different lists for my nephews. They're young, early readers. Uh, so I'll find books that I know are things that they love, and I can send that list off to my brother and say, hey, I think Chris would really like this book. So tags are really robust, either organizing and sharing, uh, or what we're going to see here on the screen in this search uh, for our pretend road trip is that your tags also appear in your search results. So if we look at the War Widow, we can see this little kind of like shopping tag next to it that says TBR. That's my to be read list or my wish list. So I would be able to, in this search that we've already super filtered down, come over here and see, oh, this is already a book that I thought, you know, I'd like or that she'd like. We can borrow it right away and dive right on in without even having to scroll any further. So this tag is coming up here to save my life and make it even faster. If this didn't appear, you know, maybe the War Widow wasn't tagged, if I keep scrolling, I'm gonna come across the devil in the dark water. And I see this tag here, it's a smart tag. We'll talk about those in a minute. It looks like a little receipt. In Libby, she's got these cool smart tags set up. So any books you borrow are automatically tagged with this receipt. So I know I've already borrowed and read the devil in the dark water. In the past, before this tag existed, I probably would have checked it out, listened to the first 30 minutes and gone, Oh wait, I've already listened to this before. So it's a great way to really make sure you don't get stuck in that habit of rereading the first 50 pages a couple times or listening to a book again. You already know, hey, I borrowed it. But let's take a step back and look at how we can add or create new tags. So here we've got in the garden of spite, borrow, play sample, tag. If I tap on tags, I can either add this book to one of my existing lists, or I can make a new tag. So you could do anything you want. Like I said, the uh, possibilities are endless. The only limits are your imagination. So maybe you want to make a mystery tag, a great place for mystery or historical fiction books to just filter in. So when you're ready for the next one, you go, oh, I'll just hop into this list and go for this book. You can also add a description if you want, but when you tend to use those genre tags, like, oh, hey, this is a mystery, you know what, you know what the books are. You don't need the description. <laughs> now on this choose tags page, we can see it's split up into regular and smart. Your regular tags are what I've already described, just those basic lists that you've been keeping, whether it's those gift lists or suggested reading lists or your own wish lists or my cookbook list. Those are nothing, they have nothing special about them. There's no special abilities. They're just a place to keep yourself organized. Smart tags, however, have those special abilities. So you'll all have this uh, borrowed smart tag. Mine has the little receipt emoji and uh, we've already seen that. So Libby applies this whenever you borrow a book. And that way you can see it when it pops up in your search results. So you don't have to worry about accidentally borrowing a book again or rereading the same thing over and over again. The other one down here, this is our notify me tag. 
Right now, this just applies to magazines, so I have it named magazines. And when you borrow a magazine for the first time, Libby will ask if you want to create this smart tag. And then going forward, anytime you borrow a magazine, she'll ask if you want to add it to your Notify Me tag. What the Notify Me tag does is it lets you know when a new issue is added to that magazine series. So if you love HGTV magazine like I do, you have it in your Notify Me tag. And then when the newest issue is added, Libby's gonna send you a notification like she does when a hold is ready to let you know, hey, there's a new magazine ready for you to borrow. The cool thing about magazines is they are available all the time. Everyone can borrow the same magazine at once. And there's no, so there's never a hold list and they don't impact your checkout limits. So you can have a hundred magazines checked out and you'd still be able to borrow eight eBooks and audiobooks. All right, so that's what tags are, how I use them, why I love that they pop up in search results like this, because this has now made my, e or my audiobook finding super easy. Let's look at where they live in Libby. Aside from just appearing in search results, if you tap on that stack of books and go to your shelf, you can see up at the top, we have loans, holds, and tags. When I tap on tags, this is going to pop up that similar list where we see all of our tags listed out. And if we tap on one of those lists, this is where we can see everything on that list. So you can always scroll through. Couple things, we have a little sneaky tip in here. We've seen this library card with the plus sign all throughout the Libby app today. If you tap on this, you can borrow right away, play a sample, tag it, or you can look through your different libraries and your library cards and see what library has it available, or if there is a hold list, which one has the shortest hold list. So you can join that one instead of a longer one. few things to wrap up the tags tip up at the top where we see actions. From here, you can rename your tag. Maybe when you were typing it out quickly in that search, you misspelled it, you can come in and rename it. If you don't want a tag, like maybe you don't want Libby to automatically uh, mark your borrowed books, you could go in and delete the tag. But the most important button in here is export tag. My favorite is table but you'll find which one works best for you. You can go into spreadsheet or data, but when you do, we'll be in the data export page. And from here, you can send out this tag list uh, in a text message, in an email, or you can even print it out. So maybe you're the leader of book club and you want to kind of put together the list of, hey, these are all the different books that we'll be reading this year. I'll make my tag list in Libby and then I can export it out either via email, text, or print, or any of those other options. And then it's a really easy way for your book club to go, okay, these are the books, who wrote them, where they're coming from, and just a super convenient feature. Or it's a great way when I'm like, hey, my dear brother, here's a list of books that kids might wanna read. And that wraps up our tip about tagging. We're going to hit our fourth and final tip, after we wrap up that one, I'll have some time set aside. If you have any questions or anything you'd like to see live on screen, feel free to send those through the Q&A. So our fourth and final tip is about making notes and highlights. Now, it's great if you're a student or if you have a student in the school. I'm just gonna open up Pride and Prejudice here. This is a book I have annotated the pants off of. <clears throat> we can dive in to a book and make notes and highlights. So whether you're a student or you're in book club, or if you're like me and you just like to annotate what you're reading, this is a great way to do that. Give me one second. There we go. So to make notes and highlights in the text, you're going to uh, find where you want to start. So we'll just go to by Jane. I'm gonna move my cursor a little bit to the left of the word so you can see what happens when I place my finger on the screen and hold down 
on the word by. We can see that it's turning blue. And now I can keep dragging my finger to highlight as much or as little as I want. So once my finger hit the screen, I stayed holding down and then I started dragging along. Once I've got everything I wanted highlighted, I'll lift up my finger and then we can come down and tap highlight. You can pick different colors to keep yourself organized. Once the highlight is made, tap on that colored portion. And from here, you can tap into make a note and type in your note. Now for the sake of time, I'm just gonna say this is a note, but you can type paragraphs in here. I have typed so much out, so as much or as little as you like, and then tap save. And you can keep on scrolling. You'll see different highlights as you go through. These are uh, linked to your library card. You're not doing anything to the library book itself. So no one but you can see your notes and highlights and they are saved to your account. So even after this book returns, not only can you still access them, if you borrow them again, if you borrow the book again, it will pop back into the page. So if you are still borrowing the book, if you tap in the center of the screen and go to the bookmark menu here, we'll see all of the notes and highlights we've made in this book in a convenient list. I can scroll through. And if I want to hop into a specific note or highlight, I can just tap on it. And now I'll see that full highlight on the screen. And if I tap on it, my note is going to drop down from the top. Now, this is great, but we all know that every once in a while, book club is on the 25th, but the book was due on the 23rd and it goes back. Well, you can still view your notes and highlights even if the book is no longer in your possession. So all we need to do to see notes and highlights from a book that we don't have borrowed is get to the title details page for that book. So if you remember from getting started to get to a title we're looking for, we can just tap on that magnifying glass. Oops, and it was still from our earlier session. And I can type in what I was looking for. The book I'm looking for is called The Guest List. I'm just going to type in the name and tap on search. And everything in English matching the guest list is going to pop up here. Now I just need to tap on that jacket cover and I'm on that title details page, nice and quick. What I'm looking for on here now though, is the reading journey. So this reading journey starts the moment you borrow the book and it kind of tracks all of your engagement. So I'll tap on reading journey. And from here, we've got a lot of great info. I can see that familiar actions button up at the top. So if I want to export my notes and highlights from this book, just like we did with tags, I could tap on export reading data and send it to myself in an email or a text message or print it out. Or if I don't want to do all that to export it, I just want to look at it quickly. Excuse me. I can scroll down on this page under the timeline for this title and tap right into one of the highlights I'm looking for on here. Let's tap on a highlight at 5%. And it's going to show me the full passage that I highlighted and my full typed out note. So a great way to still be able to access titles even after they've returned to the library. And that wraps up our fourth and final tip, making notes and highlights. We have a few minutes left here where we can go over any questions you might have or anything you'd like to see live in Libby. Feel free to send those through the Q&A. And of course, if you don't have any questions, we'll end a little bit early and give you some time back to your morning. So take some time to send those through now. One thing I wanted to just mention one final time, 
is even though you've had access to me for this webinar to ask your questions, you can always find help directly in the Libby app. So remember, if you tap on the Libby menu and then under help and support, tap get some help, you can come up here and type in those questions you might have. So if you wanted to find out more about tags, or if you had a question about tags, maybe it wasn't doing something you thought it was going to, you could hop into an article like what are tags, or you can even come down and tap ask, oops. My hand hit the screen. We can come down and tap ask our support team. And remember, you can send that email to those Libby experts 24 seven, 365 days of the year. All right, and that wraps up our Learning Libby with the Experts webinar. Thank you all so much for your time and your attention and your patience today. Hopefully you had a wonderful experience and you picked up some new tips and tricks with the Libby app. Remember, you'll get an email tomorrow morning from Zoom that includes a link to our full recorded presentation. You have 30 days to view this uh, in your email. After that, it will expire, but if you'd like to keep that video permanently, you can do so by tapping the box that says download. Promise you won't miss it. If you download it, it's yours to keep forever. If you have any questions following this webinar, please feel free to reach out to our tech support team directly in the Libby app under help and support, get some help. And with all of that said, thank you so much for joining us today and happy reading. When I end the meeting, a survey is going to pop up in your web browser. Please fill that out for us. Have a great day.